today we have a ad hoc session. Uh, Mark uh, asked him to describe how we do the release for Jenkins Docker images. So today we will just have a short walk through of the release process and uh, we will get it published on uh, the documentation side. Okay, do you see my screen? I do, thanks. Um, okay, just quick introduction for those who don't uh, know uh, the structure of Docker images. Um, for Jenkins agents, we have two main repositories. One is Docker slave, another one is Docker general pslave. Disclaimer, uh, I'm going to rename them soon, uh, so they will be finally agents, uh, but uh, it's a bit uh, delayed. Uh, so uh, Docker slave is a base image, which basically uh, packages remoting and a few other components, and uh, you can see that there is a bunch of platforms that are being released. And uh, there is a second um, uh, project, uh, Docker General Pslave, uh, which actually uh, provides um, inbound uh, connection support for Jenkins. So General P here, it's not the Java Web Start, it's just a historical name of the protocols. But uh, what it really does, it connects um, agent using uh, uh, standard parameters. So basically similar to how we connect the remote in Java to Jenkins masters. Uh, so it's advanced wrapper being compared to Docker Slave. Here we have um, a few Docker files. All of them are more or similar. We use uh, Jenkins Slave. This is uh, this repository as a base image, and uh, then we get it released. You can see that uh, now the version we consume is uh, uh, 4.0.1-1. So what it means? Um, we use remoting uh, based versioning. There is a remoting project. And here you can see that uh, there is a change log. Um, and the last release of remoting uh, was 4.2, which uh, fixed uh, uh, one uh, issue which impacts um, uh, installation as a service. Um, so it was a regression on the Jenkins score. It's not a problem for us for Docker images, so we do not uh, bump immediately uh, unless Mark wants uh, to update it uh, as a part of uh, this demo. Um, and uh, what was uh, the ask? We just wanted to release the current version. So our state that uh, for Docker General P agent, we still do not have uh, the recent release. So here yeah, we will use a release drafter uh, to, to make change logs and you can see what changes we have uh, staged. So basically ones which haven't been released from the master branch. And here we have um, enable WebSocket support. So it's a JEP which has been recently released in Jenkins core. So we still need uh, an engine. There are also uh, other things uh, which we need uh, to process. So this is what we will be releasing. How the release uh, process works here. Um, this repository has continuous delivery. Um, you can go to Docker Hub and on Docker Hub you can uh, see that uh, uh, there is a number of labels being submitted. Mm, so just here. Um, and uh, there are latest labels. So latest labels being uh, delivered automatically every time you merge the pull request. So it's full continuous delivery. And there are also tagged labels. So for example, 3.40.1, GTK11, Alpine. Uh, this is what we still need to release. So to have a tagged version for the a new deployment. Uh, in order to do that, um, the, what we need is to just uh, cut a, a new release on the GitHub side because the rest will be handled uh, by uh, Docker Hub. So currently our build uh, runs on Docker Hub. There is a plan to move it to CI Jenkins IO or other instance. But right now Docker Hub uh, does what we need. So here let's uh, check that everything is uh, ready uh, to be released. So again, uh, the version we will be uh, picking up is 4.0.1. So we can uh, start editing a draft. So since I'm doing the release, what I'll do, I'll just create uh, a new draft. So the version for us will be for the uh, uh, remoting version dash one. So how we prepare this version, uh, there is documentation in this repository, I believe. Uh, but basically it's a base version of uh, remoting we use uh, plus uh, um, uh, one number which we use for incremental versions uh, based on this uh, same baseline because we still uh, we may still need to deliver changes in some cases. 
Yep. So it looked like there was not already a 4.0.1-1. Oh, no, it was 3.40-1. Thank you. Sorry. It's, right. So so the, the left-hand side, the remoting version number, this is the first time we will have published mm -hmm. a release with the left-hand side 4.0.1. Thanks. Exactly. Uh, yeah, so we will still need to copy edit it. So I'm just copying uh, what we have now in the release drafter. So you can see that uh, this draft is not complete because some uh, pull requests haven't been tagged properly and we will need uh, to review them. Um, and uh, also maybe need to release title. So let's double check what is our policy because we we'll sometimes forget it. So we use uh, just version and uh, name here. So without uh, V prefixes or whatever. And it's important to keep this version in because uh, we have repositories uh, which use dependabot uh, to pick up uh, dependencies and they need uh, this information. So let's take a look at our release again. You can see that uh, there are multiple uh, <laughs> images here and we need to double check that everything is fine. Um, so um, here we have uh, multiple versions. All of them should be aligned. So these are three images which we uh, push to the production. And another ones are Docker uh, ones. So Docker, uh, sorry, Windows images are now experimental. We still want to ensure that uh, they're more or less aligned, but uh, here you can see that uh, they use late uh, version. But what it means is that we don't really need to do version management here. Each time, um, uh, so latest versions get released automatically every time. So yeah, it's not our problem right now. We basically control only these images. We know that uh, they're ready to go. So let's um, just prepare. Here, uh, yeah, we have a change log which we still need to finalize. So um, these changes uh, are ready to go, but let's take uh, a look at this one. So it is timeout in netcard helper. So you can see that it's test automation. So basically it's an internal change, which doesn't impact uh, users. So we just put it here. Got it. Okay. And uh, uh, this change is going to be a bit more complicated because um, it's remoting. So here you can see that uh, we basically bump the dependencies. Um, uh, and uh, we already have a uh, Docker slave repository, so we can just take a look what is uh, the change log there so that we can pick it up. And then change log there has been already prepared. It's uh, update to remote in 4.0.1 to pick up uh, minor improvements for the client side. Uh, that's it. Um, it was uh, one of uh, issues we had because uh, yeah, it was marked as a security release, but it's not a security release uh, for agents. It's only for the master side. So we can uh, uh, put a significantly uh, low priority message. So I just copied uh, the release text um, and yeah, I copy proper pull request reference and I think that's fine. Uh, and this is actually a dependency update. So we may need to uh, take another category for that. I'll just uh, copy it from another change log. Okay. And now, if we had if we had labeled that pull request as a dependency update, it would have done this for us automatically. But instead, you copied it for us. Yes. Got it. Okay. Well, it uh, wouldn't uh, create uh, the same change log automatically because oh, right. uh, you can see that uh, there is reference to remoting change log and other components. So it still requires some copy editing. Uh, mm -hmm. But if everything was categorized and properly and uh, pull request titles had uh, proper issues, uh, proper text, we would have spent less time. But yeah, it's business as usual. So um, this uh, release is ready. And I think we can just click a button. Okay. So I'll just, yeah, I just uh, published the release. 
So, and my experience has been that even after I've published the release, I can still make editorial corrections to the mm -hmm. release to these change logs. So it's it's not a, a permanent. Oh, I'll never be able to change it again. Yeah, you can edit the release. So okay. what happens uh, after you click publish? First thing you happens that uh, notification uh, goes out to your users. So it means uh, that uh, this text already goes to your users. Uh, but you can edit it if you need. The second thing which happens here is again we have continuous delivery. So um, Docker Hub will pick up uh, these uh, builds and uh, it will start executing. So here let's go to the builds section. I'm not logged in, but I believe that uh, it should pick it up. So, well, so you are in slash JNLP dash slave, isn't it? Slash Docker dash JNLP dash slave. Is this a different? Yeah, well, it's uh, the same repository. It so is, we, okay. Uh, we truncate the Docker prefix uh, from Docker Hub because well, nice. everything is Docker there. Okay. So you can see that uh, there is no build pending, but I suspect it's because I'm not uh, locked in. So just um, a second, I'll uh, uh, log in. And then I'll share my screen again. So meanwhile, do you have any questions, Mark? So, so the 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 process that will happen now is all going to happen on Docker Hub. The actual construction of the images and the publication on Docker mm -hmm. Hub. So, so they will execute the build. They will they will execute the build of the Docker files and publish the tags. Yeah, that's right. And and. Do we have any control at a scripting level? Everything is just, they execute all of our Docker files? Mm, yeah, that's right. So I'll just share my screen again. Okay, uh, you can see that now I have logged in. And here we can also see some information about the deals. And we can just go to the managed repository to see whether the build uh, was really executed. So, yeah, here you can see that um, we manage uh, front end. Um, we have um, a number of builds in progress. Um, so basically, we have uh, builds for Alpine, for GDK 11, and for base image, which is uh, Debian. Um, these builds are being executed. So you can, if you have permissions, you can check uh, these builds. Um, but here. Um, so regarding uh, aut automation for builds, um, the automation uh, on the side of uh, Docker Hub is quite straightforward. So we have um, uh, three baselines being released here. So here's a branch. So master branch gets uh, released automatically. So Alpine, Docker, etc., and uh, they get the latest labels. And uh, yeah, again for tags, every time uh, you take a release. Um, the event uh, goes to Docker Hub and Docker Hub executes the build. So these are the builds which have been executed right now. Uh, okay, I'm not sure what has happened. Uh, but uh, yeah, the thing that uh, all the build process is uh, managed by these files. So there is no additional magic inside. It applies Great. to almost uh, all official uh, Jenkins uh, images. So. If you use other images, which are built on Docker Hub, the process is more or less uh, the same. So agent images, uh, Jenkins file runner, or other tools like uh, the plugin compatibility tester, then uh, all of them are the same. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look what happens with our builds. This particular build uh, takes a while, uh, mostly because of scheduling, but you can see that uh, um, the version uh, is already deployed for the base image. So you can see that uh, the build has been executed. And what it means is that our users uh, can uh, now start using it and they can uh, enable with WebSocket support if they need. Uh, okay, and we can just uh, check it just in case. So it's not something I always do because uh, our CI works pretty well, but yeah. Okay. Again, uh, sleeves are temporary. 
Okay. So let's let it download. And here, for example, we can just uh, use it. Mm. We can just uh, use the version command. It should, it should be supported in this image. Mm -hmm. Well, and and just the fact that you're able to do a Docker pull tells me, okay, the the auto build on Docker Hub completed. It's there. It's been tagged and and there or labeled and therefore ready to ready to go. Yeah. So the only thing is to ensure what it. Uh, it's what you actually need, uh, but yeah, you can see that uh, there is <coughs> help, and help uh, already references uh, WebSocket flag, so it's definitely the version we need. But yeah, we can double check it if you want. Uh, yeah, so commands are not passed here that easily, but yeah, you can see the version. So yeah, we've got uh, the release we needed. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you. So, so does that conclude everything? Then the release is now done. No other items mm -hmm. need to be done. No. Uh, so the only hint is that it's better to um, copy the uh, change logs uh, before you merge pull requests because our change log automation is based on uh, labels, uh, on labels and on a pull request text. So if you spend some time before merging. Uh, or if we require you know, submitters uh, to prepare this text, we just save this time on preparing the release. Okay, so that's it. Thank you very much, Oleg. Thanks, thanks, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you and too. I will archive this and submit a pull request to the Docker JNLP slave repository with a copy of the a pointer to the documentation. Thank you.